It's been three years since Papers, Please slapped the broadside of the entire head of indie games like a sack of bricks to show everyone what they didn't know they wanted to know. How to turn oppressive, boring office work into a fun video game. This is The Police is a game about the juxtaposition of a potent, powerful office becoming a minor cog in a sinister machine. It's a game with a stark visual style whose main gameplay board is a faceless man's desk, introduced every day by a pile of newspaper headlines and a safe commute. A catchy and distinct soundtrack regularly stops to turn into just the hiss of wind and the splash of new paperwork piling up. It's presumably a game about managing a police force, a small, incredibly simplified version of Cops where only six to ten or so officers gotta respond to a couple handfuls of calls as an entire day goes by in seconds. But Freeport's finest here are not being managed by Freeport's finest, but instead by Jack Boyd. Therein lies the game's gimmick, its character, and its reason to be. The perspective and the problems we see here are viewed through the lens of a bellowing, burnt-out furnace of a man. Jack Boyd is voiced by the imposing and throaty John St. John, deliberately painting the image of a Duke Nukem who didn't age gracefully. Our main character is instead a middle-aged mountain of blubber, back problems, and faux authority. Hell, if there weren't any rules, I'd be belching and farting, jumping up on the table, arms held high, yelling, shake it, baby! If Duke Nukem was an actual human being instead of a pretend video game character, this is the kind of person he'd be in real life. Someone who joined a slimy police force to seek cheap thrills and an easy power trip, but someone who'd easily succumb to an office position later on for the security of long-term financial stability, but someone who'd also blow all of that at the strip club and on a winning painkillers addiction. He's not the hero we deserve, nor the one we need. He's the one we just gotta put up with. So it's up to us to raise this guy's entire retirement fund the day he announces his retirement. Sure, there's a chance you could raise half a million bucks in six months by being a good cop and bringing in the baddest of the bad guys, the gang leaders, the serial killers, and the like, but that's not likely. How likely is it anyway that enough bad guys even exist to raise half a million in six months just from bonuses alone? So no matter how you play, you're gonna be skimming off more from the top than what this guy probably deserves. And the hows and whys of that process form the backbone of what should be robust gameplay. Which is the whole design challenge of the Papers, Please concept, right? To see how many interesting problems can be played in interesting ways just from the perspective of one guy's desk. So you might find yourself taking sides in a mafia war. You might find yourself selling them confiscated contraband. And in some of the most interesting and surprisingly common situations of all, you might find yourself noticing that it's easier to have problematic cops killed than to have them legally fired. But all the time, you will find yourself frustrated at one of the most villainous mayors in fiction. 180 days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. This guy is always up to no good, and the memos you receive from City Hall from him are ridiculous. One day, he expects you to succumb to the threats of racist gangs. The next day, he expects you to meet the demands of racial activism groups. He might want three officers pulled from duty to sing choruses for his wife. He might want them over there cleaning the walls. It never stops with this guy. And the absurdity of those demands, coupled with the hard-hitting language sometimes thrown around here, coupled with the sense of humor and style that oftentimes defuses that awkwardness from the top, create systems that are set up to tell the metaphor the devs are trying to make effectively and inoffensively. Because I can't ambush drug smugglers at the docks and also help this guy getting stabbed when the two officers who could help are busy guarding a french fry eating contest at City Hall? God! So sooner or later, you notice a correlation between how many cops are busy helping out at City Hall versus how many cops and civilians are dying on the streets from there being not enough cops. So you get a letter from City Hall punishing you for your poor performance by downsizing the police budget, which means layoffs. But getting officers back on the force requires you to pony up to City Hall to get that budget request approved, which means less cops patrolling the streets, which means City Hall is creating a self-fulfilling prophecy of poor performance by contributing to the very problem that their punishment is supposed to solve. 
And for the first four to six hours of that, of tossing around economic gameplay tokens that create powerful metaphors for real life problems, it's all good clean fun. Especially since today's alarming political climate makes the game's story even scarier. But once you're eking out into hour seven and onwards of this thing, the crushing reality of staring at this same desk screen with all the same menus clicking through the same problems over and over again, uh, it, it becomes a bit hard to bear. This is The Police falls into the all too easy video game trap of making the thing just too gosh darn long. I'm not typically one to argue against length, but I've always wanted to gauge length against value, and while any branch of the equally repetitive and simple papers please seems to end right at the five hour mark where you wanted to burn the whole thing down, that seemed like the point it should have ended at. Because that was the point it was trying to make. This is the police stretches on into 15 to 20 hours of repetition far, far past that point, past the point where you've figured out the tricks faster than the difficulty curve can keep up, past the point where continuing on feels like giving up at something else you could have been doing with all that time. It goes past the point where our characters truly craze dedication and endurance seems like an apt metaphor, and more like it's just past the point where the game design could have efficiently conveyed that earlier. Because playing through problems this simple from just this one perspective does not stay interesting for 20 whole hours. And all of this just kind of makes me appreciate how clever Papers, Please actually was. Its core gameplay was a unique physiological challenge of testing the player's short-term memory, eyesight, and visual pattern recognition. Scanning flat documents for forgery isn't what you do in most games, and in Papers, Please, that gameplay concept wasn't even that much of an abstract concept. The obstacles were passports, the gameplay was scanning them for stamping them, your role never escaped that of an immigration officer. In This is the Police, your role is dispatcher, commissioner, and actual in-person policeman all at once, and the problems of all those roles are presented as menu windows sliding in and out of the air on top of a plastic model magically animated with traffic. And the process of solving them is very basic 4x strategy game math. You convert the units you're tossing around into currency to figure out what the best long-term investment is. And instead of telling the story from dialogue heard over and notes slid onto your desk, it falls back onto good old cutscenes. Delightful to watch, especially to hear, cutscenes of fiendishly well-written comic book panels riffing hard from Max Payne to tell the developer's own seedy corruption conspiracy. All the while, John St. John is doing what he does to create a hilarious anti-hero, and really just about everyone on here is really good. But the story faces the same problem of the game being spread far too thin over far too long. I feel like the gameplay could have been chopped in half, lasting 90 of these 5 minute game days instead of 180 of them. As it stands, you can play for an upwards of 90 minutes at times with no story beat rewarding you for your effort. And even then the cutscenes seem to go twice as long as they should. Particularly because they have these weird pauses that hang between characters' as dialogues. But with artsy, self-aware games like these, you always gotta expect that the game itself knows what's up. And if the game knows one thing when wrapping up its story, it's that if you endured 20 hours of investment through this repetitive grind, you will probably really care about what happens. And what happens delightfully plays with that emotion, creating, and commenting on, a self-aware, strategic character cop drama. You're no cartoon, Mr. Boyd. You suffer too much. You have too many doubts, too much fear, too much internal conflict. Maybe that's why the people of this city forgive all your mistakes. Because you seem like a real human being.